That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And that's Aggie. Our Sphinx cat. And today we're here to talk about Gretel and Hansel, a grim fairy tale, which opens on January 31st, 2020, courtesy of United Artists Releasing, produced by Orion Pictures. This film was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I was. I, I, I'm still. Yeah. For a horror film in, in January. In January, yeah, it's usually not a good sign. Yeah. Uh, it's directed. We by, have the cat because yeah. there's a sphinx cat in the film. Yes, <laughs> but because all evil witches always always have, need a hairless cat, <laughs> and I'm an evil witch. In medieval times, of course. Yeah. Before that. Happened. Before they existed. Yes. Uh, uh, so it's directed by Osgood Perkins, who is the son of Anthony Perkins. Norman Bates, Norman, Psycho. Mm -hmm. Among um, other things, among many like other HIV things. and AIDS, but yes, and and also <laughs> the son of uh, Barry Berenson, the actress and model who died on the September 11th. Uh, very interesting uh, background Family dynamic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, anyhow, it, it, as the title suggests, it's basically a, a a retelling of Hansel and Gretel, but done in a style that's kind of like genre films in the 70s. It's a slow burn, dare I say, cerebral. Uh, but if you've seen uh, Perkins' two previous directorial efforts, including The Black Coat's Daughter, which was also, I think when I saw it, it was known as just February, um, with Emma Roberts, or I'm the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House with Ruth, Ruth Wilson and Paula Prentice, which is on Netflix. Uh, I, I think this is in keeping with him, but on a much grander uh, scale. Uh, so it was shot by Gallo Oliveres. This is only his second feature as cinematographer. Wow. D has done a lot of shorts. Uh, I love the score. Uh, Robin Couder, a uh, Frenchman uh, who did the Maniac, the score for the Maniac remake in 2012. Okay. Which, with Elijah Wood. Yes. And then um, a really uh, an underrated film called Planetarium uh, by Rebecca Zlotowski uh, that I think just, I think, went over people's heads in 2016. Anyway, great score, love the look out of it, like German expressionistic vibes, vintage John Carpenter. Well, hold on, so the story, the, the fairy tale most of us are familiar with uh, is Hansel and Gretel go off into the woods. And with the trail of breadcrumbs. To get back home and they meet the witch who wants to eat them. Yes, and, and I think they end up fooling her and instead baking her in the oven. Um, so the, the, a semblance of that uh, is still, <laughs> is, is still uh, evident. But, the, but the, it's a retelling. It's a retelling. Okay, so Hansel and Gretel are kicked out by their mom, who clearly is like emotionally distraught after, I, I couldn't quite tell if the father died or he just ran away. Um, I, I don't remember. It, it, it's not quite clear. Either way, the mom basically like violently kicks them out of the house, like threatens to chop them up into pieces if they don't Basically. Leave. But actually, the film opens with uh, omniscient narration about a different fairy tale. Yes. Uh, about a little girl in a pink hat who's the most beautiful girl in the village, but she's born with some cancer-like disease, and the father brings her to an enchantress, which, like... Awesome opening visuals, by the way. Uh, the, yeah. the Enchantress takes the uh, poison out of the little girl, but leaves a gift behind, which is second sight. But then the girl ends up using it to kill everyone. Uh, so they banish. And that little girl is the daughter of the witch. Played by Alice Kriege, uh, who is a, a, a fabulous in many uh, genre films. Like my favorite is Sleepwalkers. She's excellent, but we'll talk about that in okay. a second. Okay, so they're kicked out. They make their way, like, they head for, like, foresters. Is that what it was? Yeah, they wend their way through the woods. To the mom foresters. recommends, well, no, they just head off and they, there's another, like, right away, a really creepy scene where they happen upon, like, a house and they just lay down to go to sleep. Yes. And there's, like, a really creepy man who, like, wakes up and attacks them. That was an excellent scene. And then they're saved, and, and then... And then the man who owns the home, who... Now, looking back, I don't know what his intention was. Like, did he deliberately set them off to find the witch? Right. That's okay. why... And that's where you get... So, Sophia Lillis from the It films uh, is... She's... It's, it's from her perspective, and that's the first moment where they set up. You can't... You have to be... Well, not really even the first moment, but the, the whole subtext... 
well, I guess it's just text because they plain old say it, uh, is to be wary of people that are giving you gifts because once you accept it, something is being taken away from you. Yes. So they meet this kind man in the house where they were attacked and he feeds them, gives them a place to sleep and tells them like head west. So they head west and come upon the witch's home and it entices them because the home is filled with like all the food and they're starving. Uh, so immediately they're taken in. It's obvious something's wrong because mm -hmm. she looks like a witch. <laughs> well, she looks crazy. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, uh, kind of a strange way of speaking. Her fingers look like they've been permanently di dipped, dipped in black ink. ink and her teeth are black. Uh, <laughs> She's amazing. We'll talk about that. But uh, ultimately she, uh, can, she wants to eat the boy to get rid of him. Uh, because she eats children and and she she recognizes that Gretel has like what so this has the same gift a, she has a spoiler alert yeah, would yeah be spoiler that, that alert. The, the retelling of this includes the fact that uh, Gretel uh, sh shares the same story as this witch she's a witch, witch as well yeah she's been gifted but she does not want to eat her brother mm -hmm. so she saves him so basically like she defeats the witch and sends her brother off to you know hopefully grow and up and, and stays along with the sphinx cat and stays along with her sphinx cat uh to i guess practice her witchcraft and but but kind of for the good it's, it's she's kind of a good witch yeah because in the very end she sees all the little kids that the previous witch had trapped in the woods mm -hmm. and she kind of it allows them to be set free. Okay, so what did we like about the film? Oh, the look. Well, above all, Alice Creech. Uh, but the the look of the film. Uh, I think the cinematography was oh, really yes. good. There are a lot of really good shots. Um, I yes. think the set design was really great. I think whoever scouted the location. Oh yeah, it's, it's looked like the woods were. It was really good. I like the colors. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it felt like vintage when she the, the scene where she leads her brother out to the woods to say this if you want to go This is where you go in that red and there's light, that the red ball. light and the, yeah. the, and the dark images mm -hmm. and there was a lot of imagery that it felt like that film the witch kind of Oh, Robert Eggers. Yeah, in fact, this is probably more along the lines of what people That were disappointed and how that film was marketed would have liked this but I'll, this is still a slow burn um, It is but it was creepy and uh, but anyway, so the visuals uh Alice Creech? Yeah, so she's South African. Uh, she she kind of became big in their, well, in the early 80s, she was in Chariots of Fire in 81 and Ghost Story, another classic show. So I don't know how old this woman is right now, and I don't know what she looks like today, but she, I don't, so I don't know how much makeup they needed to put on her to make her look like this, but she looks perfect. Yes. At every detail, the way she speaks, like perfect. Perfect. Oh yes, well I mean I love how she speaks in Sleepwalkers when she's yeah. I'm famous Charles. Yes. Uh, and she's the Borg Queen in Star Trek First Contact. She's she's probably not uh, that well known in the U.S. Even though she's been in quite a few uh, very notable films. Uh, excellent casting. Yes. Um, uh, and I think the fact that I mean obviously we knew that it was going to be dark, mm -hmm. right? So it delivered like it was sufficiently dark. Um, so great film. What didn't work for me, I think the only issue I had is the... So there are only three characters talking. Mm -hmm. The witch and then Hansel and Gretel. Mm -hmm. The dialogue between... So the, the witch's di dialogue is very effective. She has kind of some even like funnier lines. Yeah. Um, like, un, you know, like unintentional but not like campy. Mm -hmm. uh, but the dialogue for Hansel and Gretel was a little hokey at times. Yes, the uh, Samuel Leakey is Hansel. It's uh, his, his debut And then Hansel's film. acting, you know, bless his heart. He's a cute little he's kid. Cute, but, but his acting was not the best. I thought Sophia Lillis was good, but I think, again, some of the dialogue, the screenplay was by Rob Hayes. Um, she did well with what she was given. Uh, so I think it was just the dialogue. I think I liked how her narration fit with the feel of the film more than her, her speaking. actual speaking. Um, yeah. But that's it. Other than that, I, I, like, there are no missteps. So then I like the slow burn. I like the pacing. It's a short film. It's under 90 minutes. Yes. So when she, so she kind of discovers that she has the gift maybe like two thirds of the way through. Mm -hmm. And it's implied that like she's been learning from the witch, like the witch is teaching her. So it's out in the open that she recognizes she has the power and she's harnessing it. But 
not like, like we don't see much and then she creates a potion to put the witch to sleep and then kind of like is during that time is able to like witness what's going on and sees that her brother is about to be eaten and defeats the witch mm -hmm. with her powers yeah, it's it's so uh, it happens very fast a bit like, of a rushed it, ending, it feels yeah. very like rushed. this would have actually been a film that would have benefited from like maybe another 10 minutes of some other sequences which i never want to sit in a theater longer than i have to but i agree i think this film needed yeah. an extra 10 and i would have welcomed it yeah uh, because she the scene where she defeats the witch it literally happens like so fast mm -hmm. she just like harnesses her power and kills the witch and then we're done and it almost made me wonder and it, it because you're there he eventually is shackled to the hansel and gretel uh well, you know, and their names are switched around here. Uh, Storyline, I almost wish think this would have been so much better if he had just, it could have been inspired by, but he does a whole totally, a totally new, he doesn't even need to be part of that. Cause that, the um, set up, uh, the, the book ending uh, fable, fairy tale is much creepier, I think, than Hansel and Gretel about that little girl with the enchantress. Um, Yes, the tale yeah. within the tale is also quite creepy. You know, maybe there'll be a spinoff with that. Well, you know, every few decades we get some Hansel and Gretel. There was that terrible Hansel and Gretel Jeremy Witch Renner. Hunters with. Yeah. Oh, that was. Yeah, this. Abysmal. That, this is leaps and bounds more creative and uh, effective. This is a not well. There's a campy film with Shelley Winters called "Whoever Slew Auntie Rue" that Curtis yeah. Harrington directed. That's a lot of fun, but like total camp trash but so i would give this film three and a half out of five stars i concur with that i also would uh like to see more things from osgood perkins mm -hmm. I, I i definitely recommend you go back and watch his first two i would like to see him do more grimm's fairy tales yeah I maybe would. maybe that could be his gig but yeah this is a great movie because both of those films also deal with women trapped in houses and the things that have been there before leave residues or it's in his first film, it's Girls in a Soror uh, College Campus. What's the other movie coming out this weekend? Um, the Rhythm Section. Oh, The Rhythm mm -hmm. Section. Yeah, if you're going to go spend your little $19 or whatever a movie costs, uh, I would. I think this film's worth it. Oh, yes, definitely. I yeah. agree. Um, do you have anything else? Uh, no, that's it. All right, bye. Bye.